The Pacific has finally been revealed for Battlefield 5, and it looks like it's been worth the wait. DICE released their three and a half minute epic gameplay trailer yesterday, which I'm sure you've all seen by now, and it does give us a near complete look at what's coming to the game in 2019 for the Pacific Theatre. In this video today, I'm going to bring you all of that information and all of the extra details surrounding the Pacific that have now been confirmed by DICE, so we're talking about stuff like maps, weapons and all other content. But a big disclaimer before I start, I have already played the new Pacific content. I've been at the DICE.com studio for the last two days, and whilst I'd love to go into even more detail and show you some proper gameplay, because I do have some, I'm not allowed to do that until next week when my embargo lifts. So for now, we're going to be working through the official information that we have publicly, so you know exactly what to expect when you see that gameplay next week and when the chapter launches on October the 31st. Okay then, let's start with the biggest stuff first of all, and probably the most exciting stuff, the maps in the Pacific. Now coming in 2019, we have three maps. Pacific Storm, Iwo Jima, and then Wake Island. Pacific Storm and Iwo Jima, they're going to go live the moment the update goes live on October the 31st, after the patch is downloaded. You'll be able to play those first two maps straight away, and then Wake Island is going to be arriving in December, roughly a month or so later. Now, Pacific Storm, it's almost the spiritual successor, or really the spiritual predecessor, to Paracel Storm from Battlefield 4, because, well, this has happened before Paracel Storm. Paracel Storm set in modern day future combat, and then here, Pacific Storm set during World War II. Apparently, the same level designer who worked on Paracel Storm worked here on Pacific Storm, so you are going to notice some similarities between the two maps, but it's a classic Battlefield map if we're going off of Paracel Storm. We've got that air, land, and sea combat all rolled into one, and the map lets you move between the islands, capturing flags spaced across them. And as the name suggests, a huge storm can engulf the combat as well, and that limits your vision according to the Battlefield website, so that's kind of giving me Levolution vibes from Battlefield 4 as well. Then there's Iwo Jima, the iconic location of that huge American invasion in the Pacific against a really strong Japanese defense. We've got the infamous beach landings, that's part of this map, as well as the grasslands beyond, and then up into the caves of Mount Suribachi itself. There will be cave combat here on Iwo Jima, and that is going to be really interesting. A wide open map suddenly going into tight caves could be really interesting. And then the third map, Wake Island, as I said, coming a little bit later on. This is coming in a reimagined form for Battlefield 5, but as we can see from this screenshot here in the trailer, it's still got that very familiar horseshoe shape that the island has been seen in many different versions of Battlefield games, and there's plenty of locations on it that will make for good flag capture points. It's Wake Island at the end of the day, so veteran players out there, this is a map that you should be looking out for. Moving on from maps, it's time to talk about weaponry. There's a bunch of American and Japanese items that will be added to the game throughout the Pacific chapter via the Tides of War weekly challenges and via the chapter reward system as well, but we're going to start with the weapons that will go live the moment the update launches. So these four weapons, you won't have to unlock them. They will be there for you to use the moment you start playing. First of all, the M1 Garand. It's going to be available for the Assault class, it's a weapon that players of this game have been craving for for the longest time. You're finally going to be able to hear that iconic ping reload and have access to probably the most iconic weapon of World War II. For the Medic class, we have the Type 100 SMG. This Japanese weapon features a fast rate of fire and decent control properties that will be perfect for places like those caves on Iwo Jima or the smaller island bases on Pacific Storm. For the support class, the weapon available will be the M1919A6 Browning machine gun. This is being added to Battlefield 5 as an MMG, so you won't be able to properly aim down the sights unless you deploy the included bipod, but it's another really iconic American gun from the war. And then for the recon class, 
we have the Type 99 Arisaka rifle. Based on one of the strongest bolt action rifles ever manufactured, the Type 99 is an upgrade on the previous Type 38 rifle. It uses a larger caliber round to inflict more damage. As I said, those four weapons will be available to you to equip the moment you install the Pacific update, giving you some theater authentic weapons to use alongside all of the other weapons already available in Battlefield 5. There won't be any locking of weapons into specific maps or certain sections of Battlefield 5. All weapons added to the game at any point will be able to be used on any map or any part of the game. So you're free to choose to use whatever weapon you want. And then over the course of Chapter 5, a bunch more weapons are going to be added to the game via the Tides of War challenges. We're going to have the M3 Grease Gun, the Nambu Type 2A SMG, the Type 97 Light Machine Gun, and the BAR A2, just to name a few of them. There's likely going to be quite a few more weapons and cosmetics added via the Tides of War that aren't detailed here, so stay tuned to the channel for more info on that as we get close to the launch of the Pacific chapter. Separate to the Tides of War, DICE is going to be handing out at least three other weapons via the chapter reward system, which is free for all players of Battlefield 5. The first one, the Jungle Carbine, and then the Type 94 and Type 97 sidearms. Those will be chapter reward items that will be unlocked for reaching certain chapter ranks. And then finally, two other things. DICE will be setting up the Lunge Mine, this weird looking Japanese tank mine thing that we saw in the trailer. That's going to be a gadget available for unlock through Tides of War as well. It kind of looks like a weapon that could be used for a little bit of trolling as much as it can be used for destroying tanks. So I'm looking forward to giving that one a go. And also mentioned is the Barbed Wire Bat as a melee weapon that can be unlocked too. Sticking with weapons for a moment, we're going to discuss two others that kind of aren't loadout weapons. They're battle pickups being added to the Pacific map. So this kind of sets apart the Pacific maps from all others in the game. You can't pick up these kind of high powered weapons on any of the European maps. So kind of excited. The Katana and the M2 Flamethrower are going to be your choices. And Battlefield 5 is kind of taking a leaf out of Battlefield 4's book here. It's bringing back these limited use pickup items, which I did rather enjoy in the old game. So it's nice to see them back here in Battlefield 5. These items are going to be placed on the map somewhere and you can go and pick them up and then use them until you either die or run out of ammunition, as is the case with the M2 flamethrower. How these pickups are going to work with the rest of your loadout, we haven't had any information on that yet. Having these limited use items back does add a little bit more flavor to the combat in Battlefield 5 though. Seems like it's going to be a little bit more fun for you to just run around with these things and have a mad few moments. And it's kind of like another threat for players to be aware of. Battlefield is a sandbox franchise after all, so adding a little bit of spice into the chaos in the form of katanas and flamethrowers, that is going to be for a good time. So that's it for the weapons, but now on to the vehicles. These are going to play a big part in the gameplay here in Battlefield 5 Pacific. And of course, this theater played host to a bunch of well-known vehicles from World War II. Two brand new medium tanks come into the game, the M4 Sherman and the Type 97, the Sherman for the Americans and the Type 97 for the Japanese. That's going to give players something with decent armor and decent speed on both sides for fairly balanced gameplay and it's just going to provide you with that massive hit of World War II classicness at the same time. DICE is also adding amphibious tanks into the Pacific maps in the form of the American LVT and the Japanese Kami tanks. Both of these vehicles will work in water and on land at the same time, so you can take the firepower with you from island to island on the Pacific Storm map. Now, as for transport vehicles, DICE is adding the Higgins boat for the Americans and the rather simple dinghy for the Japanese. In the trailer, we get to see the Japanese forces using that dinghy to stray some Americans that are on the shoreline. And whilst it does look pretty fast, it does look rather fragile. It is just a wooden boat at the end of the day, so that could be rather problematic. For ground transport, we have the MB Jeep and the Type 95 car as options for you to use. And then, if you're more of a pilot than you are a driver, 
the US forces are going to have access to the F4U Corsair and the Japanese will get their Zero Fighter. Now both of these planes will come in fighter and bomber variants which means on the Pacific maps you will only have the option of these two planes for the time being. Whether that's a problem for you or not we'll have to wait and see. Some people might have wanted more planes to begin with but this is the option that DICE has gone with. Now one really important thing that I should mention for the tanks and the planes, DICE is massively expanding the specialization system for these brand new vehicles. Apparently you're going to have several more branches to choose from within the specializations menu, lots more ways to really bury down and set up your tanks and planes the way that you want to. Apparently this is based on feedback from the European maps and the vehicles there. They didn't feel that there were enough options to really give you what you wanted and so DICE has really gone and buried down for this and is giving you a lot more options apparently. And if you look at this image here, another thing I wanted to mention, the salad tank as Jack Frag so eloquently named it. Does this mean finally that we're going to see tank body customization with the launch of the Pacific Theater because there's just leaves all over this thing? That's not normal. I really hope we do see that tank customization launch finally after what has been nearly 12 months of it saying coming soon in the menus. Next up, we've got some squad reinforcement information. The Americans will be able to call in the Sherman Calliope or Calliope. I still don't know how to pronounce that. This is a rocket barrage tank that will be able to devastate infantry and vehicles. And of course, they'll have access to their JB-2 rocket, just as the British Allied faction has done since the launch of the game. And for the Japanese, they're going to have their own option to call in their own rocket barrage tank, similar to the Calliope, but it will look like a Japanese one. And they've also got their own variant of the V-1 rocket, the JB-2 rocket, it's called the key 147 i go i think i think that's how you say it this was an air to surface radio guided missile that featured an 800 kilo warhead and could hit a max speed of 550 kph now both the americans and the japanese alongside their respective options they will both have access to the artillery strike the smoke barrage and the supply crate from the base game and if you pay attention to the supply crate for each of the factions, it's themed differently. So you're going to be able to tell who called it in. And then lastly for today, there will be two new elite soldiers added with the Pacific update. One each for the Americans and the Japanese. Jack Culver is the American elite. He looks pretty badass, I've got to say. And then Keisui Nakamura is the Japanese elite, and he also looks properly baller. But I do have to say that... Both of these cosmetic options, they seem to fit much more seamlessly into the setting than any of the previous elites that we've seen on the European maps. Perhaps DICE is really trying to scale back their previous approach to World War II in favour of something much more believable and authentic. That's what I'd like to believe, but apparently at the moment, all elite classes will be able to be used across different theatres, so... The German elites, you can use those for the Japanese, and then the Japanese elite you can use for the Germans, and then for the British elites you can use those in the Americans, and then the American one goes back to the British as well. So that authenticity and that believability that I just spoke about kind of seems to be not happening with this choice around elites. And I said on Twitter earlier today, I kind of think the elites should just be limited to the faction that that they were designed for. That way, the European elites, they stay in the European theater, and the Pacific elites, they stay in the Pacific theater. That way, I think everything is a lot more believable and a lot more sensible. That's just my opinion anyway. Right now, that wraps up everything that we know publicly about Battlefield 5 Pacific. I absolutely love the trailer. I think it really showcases very well the new content in a really great way, a really engaging way. I was surprised that it was such a long trailer, but I really think it did the chapter justice. You kind of got to see everything that's going to be available, and that's really, really awesome. DICE has clearly taken on feedback from players from this first year of Battlefield 5 that, that we've just worked our way through, that, that it didn't feel like a war, that it didn't feel like we were fighting in World War II. And they've poured all of that into this chapter. It almost feels like a fresh start for the game. The trailer is completely different to that reveal trailer that we saw back in May last year. They could almost be completely different games. 
This trailer was true to the era, it represented the conflict in a respectful way without marring it with those crazy soldier outfits, the stupid camos and these unrealistic injections that you just wouldn't expect to see. Of course, gameplay is the real test, and if you're looking for some of that gameplay, you are going to have to wait until next week, but make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of it and turn on notifications as well. A big thanks for watching today. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it and it helped you understand the Pacific a little bit more, or drop it a dislike if you didn't like it. And until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.